it's Marion Wallace with Restoring Ghettos Forgotten. I am on my way to the office, but I felt like I hadn't put up any uh, content. Really, I'm not by. I'm not really led by how much content I put up. I put up what I'm passionate about. I put up with um, you know current affairs or events that are important to me. Things that are things that go below the surface. And so that's why you know, I don't have video after video after video because I want to bring you something that's authentic and something that could possibly touch your heart. Uh, um, I appreciate you all for clicking on my channel. Uh, I'll, please click on my channel and subscribe if you haven't. Um, trying to grow my subscribers. And so please do that for me. But today, my conversational piece, and I call it a conversational piece, because I haven't organized it or I haven't written it down. I don't have a format or anything like that. But it's a, convers a conversational piece about uh, the state of the black man in the eyes of a black woman, coming from the eyes of a black woman or black women in general. And um, first of all, I wanna say is that, you know, I love our black men. I love all men. I've never been a person that uh, was prejudiced towards any race, creed, or color. Uh, but this is about African-American men, our men. I love our men. I do everything in my power to support our men, to encourage our men as well, because most of the time I'll shoot a video and, you know, I'm, I'm encouraging the brothers. So this is not by any means to tear down the black man because I love them too much to do that. But what I wanted to do was to bring um, some type of light into the um, pretentious nature of some of our successful black men. Now, I've made a video about successful black women before, so now it's your turn, guys. I'm driving, so I'm not gonna be looking directly in the camera at all times, but this topic is extremely, it's extremely important because it's affecting our homes when our men are not healthy or stable in a mental way, in a spiritual way, and even in a physical way. Um, what I mean by that is, you're successful, you have all type of accolades, you, you may have all the money you ever could want, desire, or need, and you have your degrees and, and, and all of these great things, and you've traveled the world, and you've done a lot, and I'm, this, this message is for older men, and, and young men can get something from this too, because it's our elders that our youth mimic. So that's why it's important that our elders, you know, um, older men get it. And older may, may be 50, maybe 40, um, younger, 30 and under. But, you know, you guys set the bar. You guys set the example for the younger men. And I'm saying this because, because you have did all these great things and you have all these accolades and some of you have all the money, like I said, you, you need. Um, some people are wealthy and you still don't have all the money you need. So let me take that back or desire. Uh, but you, you know, you've done all these great things and, and you on, you're on your stuff. But if you haven't dealt with your mental health, you haven't done enough. And you're still a part of the problem in our homes if you haven't dealt with the, those those things that that are going to separate you from your families or separate you from your community and here's what i mean men go through the same traumas similar traumas just like women and if you faced any childhood traumas and many of us have but if you face any childhood traumas abandonment is a trauma a lot of people don't want to deal with their abandonment issues but if your mother walked away if your father walked away, there are some issues within yourself that you have to reconcile and that you have to deal with. Because I guarantee you, if you don't deal with those issues, they will deal with you. They will deal with you and everybody you hold dear. If you have any um, abandonment issues, it's gonna make, make it kind of difficult for you to be in a healthy long-term relationship. Some of us, some of us can fake it all the way through. Fake it and not connect to your partner or your mate is, to me, that's just in vain. Like, what are you doing? 
some women actually need to connect to we need to connect to our mates so some, some women don't care they just there for a reason you taking care of them they're good they don't want to be connected to you they don't need you to love them because they don't they definitely don't want to love you everybody has a purpose in their relationship i'm not talking about those relationships because we do know they're out there i'm talking about the women that actually need and desire to connect to their mate to their man this video is for you if you are to ever be in a long-term healthy relationship gentlemen you have to deal with those childhood traumas and abandonment is a trauma and i'll give you an example that there's this guy that i met many years ago very nice looking well-educated gentleman and he had everything he was on a lot of people's list he wasn't on my list because i don't really have a, a list per se but he was an eligible bachelor and he told me he was 50 plus he said that he cannot connect to women because his father never wanted him and he said if i'm not good for my enough for my father to stick around or to love me then who else is going to stick around and love me and that echoed in my mind my heart and my spirit and i couldn't believe this was coming from a man of that age of that status he is not able to connect to any woman because he doesn't feel worthy of love because his father didn't love him or accept him i'm telling you abandonment is a trauma you, we have to deal with those things so what does he do now i didn't connect with him because he told me that uh, but how many other women are looking to change men and ladies we can't change a brother but how many other women would have went into that relationship with that man and gotten hurt because he cannot connect to anyone because of his childhood trauma that he never de dealt with and that was abandonment he had abandonment issues so he was going all around pillow to post he had all types of women trailing behind him and it's just disastrous so we have to deal with those abandonment issues so that you can be the role model so that you can be the staple so that you can be the foundational piece to our communities we need you we need our men to to wake up and do something different and whatever that requires if that requires purging of the spirit purging of the spirit is not an easy task but we need to do that we need to purge we need to forgive the people that wasn't there for us or that hurt us or walked away from us and we need to move forward and sometimes we can't do that alone and it's okay see there's a stigma behind mental health like if somebody feels like they need counseling then everybody you know they feel like that's weak i can't be labeled as weak or crazy no you want to be labeled as healthy and whole don't worry about what people say you still have to deal with your issues don't you ever want to be connected to someone and open up to someone and really love to have true love that that affects your quality of life it makes life worth living i think so that's what this video is about is to encourage our brothers and our men to get out there and get healthy and whole so that you can be in healthy productive relationships um so that's one example another example this is important this is major if you if a man was ever married to a woman that was a cheater or ever in a, a serious long-term relationship with a woman that cheated on them there's still some there may be some remnants of that you, you may have developed trust issues and guess what you're going to take that into your next marriage or you're going to take that into your next relationship and you're going to place that burden on a woman that don't deserve it all because you haven't dealt with what happened with sister girl 12 15 maybe sometimes 20 years ago so that that those are things that you still have to work on and work through uh and so that you can be in a healthy whole relationship because i guarantee you that's the quickest way to to run a good woman off is when she always got to account for her time why she did something this way why she did something that way a lawyer woman ain't gonna put up with those questions somebody that's cheating yeah she's gonna always 
you know, try to smooth things out and make everything all butter. But a woman that's loyal to you, that doesn't cheat, she's not going to put up with those questions. She's not going to put up with you controlling her. She's not going to put up with all of that mental health stuff you got inside of you that you hasn't, haven't worked out. She's going to be like, I'm done. You know, because the black woman, we have to go through so much in this life that why should we have to suffer or go through that? or go through even more with a man and that's why a lot of women choose to be single because they don't want the drama they don't want the trouble and we don't like emotional men period now i'm not saying that if you you lose a um a parent or somebody was close to you and you cry in front of us i'm not talking about that type of emotion that's healthy you have to release that you have to grieve I'm talking about emotional men that can't have a, a tough conversation without screaming or without, without getting loud or without throwing something or hitting something or coming outside their regular character. Those traits, men, are very dangerous. So if you notice that whenever you're dealing with your partner, whenever you're dealing with your partner and she brings up a topic that you're you really don't like or you can't really deal with um and you get emotional about it then you're giving her warning signs that you're not emotionally healthy and most of us know if we're mature or if we've had any counseling ourselves we know little toxic traits because we've had toxic traits and some of us still may have them. I'm not trying to paint the woman as perfect because we got issues we have to deal with as well. But if you exhibit that type of behavior in front of a woman long enough, a woman that really, really is um, very conscious spiritually in every area of her life and she's trying to grow she's gonna walk away from that because she knows that if you're an emotional man emotional men beat women and they kill women it's a fact it happens every day it needs to be dealt with some emotional men and I don't know the psychology of it because I'm not you know into all that really deep i just know from experience i don't know the you know everybody's all into the books and they're reading stuff uh and some of them they do all that and they still can't apply it to their own lives they teach it but they can't apply it in their own lives so but i feel like if you got experience in the in, in the issues then maybe you can speak on it and help somebody else so that's where i'm at but i know emotional men will kill women and they beat women and they control women and that's going to make your mate walk away so you need to address those issues so if you have any trust issues steaming from a previous marriage or relationship you need to handle that don't bring that into your new relationship don't bring that into your current marriage that's a lot of weight that you're putting on your new spouse and it wasn't that person's fault and it's not your new mate's fault and then when they walk away you're trying to figure out man you know why why can't i meet a good woman you may be meeting a good woman you may you may have met several good women they just you ran them all off so that's why i'm saying guys and women too we got to do it too but i'm speaking to the fellas now because you guys if you guys are our foundation and and you're shaky like that you no woman is gonna trust you to to, to like you guys say you want to lead no woman is gonna trust a man that has a shaky foundation and he has a shaky foundation when he hasn't dealt with his childhood traumas or he hasn't dealt with past relationships or trust issues or whatever they may be she's not gonna ever feel secure or safe in that relationship and some of us, I'm not saying all of us, but some of us know how to detach our emotions and our feelings from a man that exhibits behavior that makes her question his ability to lead or his ability to secure her and make her feel safe. And then you, you, you're in a relationship with a woman and then you, you get, your relationship is turning into like, it's, it's like your roommate, you know, because you guys aren't really connected anymore because she doesn't know if she can 
connect to you and feel safe and secure because you're exhibiting all these behaviors that are red flags. And so you, you got a mate, but you don't have a mate. You get what I'm, I'm trying to say to you? And I don't think nobody wants to be in a relationship like that. So we got to deal with ourselves. And I'm not saying that there, there isn't hope because there's hope, but you have to take accountability that yes, I got some issues and I need to deal with them. No matter how successful you are, no matter how many accolades you have, no matter how de many degrees you have, you need to deal with your issues. Just like the woman has to deal with hers. And you know, it just, it upsets me. I'll, say, I'll share something from my first marriage. I'll share something. But my, um, my ex-husband was always trying to make sure I was on point. You know, like I was in church and I was the good wife and I was cooking and I was cleaning and, and I was loyal and he wanted me to do all of these things and I had to get educated and I was growing and I was going to school and I was educating myself. But you know what? He never did anything to grow. He stayed on the same level. And I'm like, I don't understand why men believe that women need to be so much better than them. No. You guys need to be better than us if you are to lead us. Because what will happen is you'll get that woman, you want her to do all these things, you want her to be all these, you know, things to you. What will happen is she'll outgrow you. Because she's going to school, she's furthering her education, she's going to counseling if she had any issues and she's addressing those. Um, she's going to church because she's building her connection to, to God, her source. So she's growing, she's building, she's evolving. Every day she's a different woman. But you're you're thinking like you were when you were 20 years old. Then you're not growing. And some women, they don't stick around. They don't stick around to see if you're going to grow any further. Especially they feel like, well, we've been at this thing for 10 years. 15 years and he's still acting like he was when we first got together then why should I stick around so I wanted to address those topics because they're important I wanted to address them because there's no nothing wrong with you going to counseling or working through some issues that you know you have inside men that walk around damaged they know that they're damaged but they're hoping they can find a counterpart or they're hoping they can find a mate that is just as damaged as they are or worse so that person will miss the relationship that we all deserve we all deserve to be in healthy whole relationships no i'm not going to carry your ex-wife's infidelity on my back no i'm not going to carry your abandonment issues of your father or your mother not being there on my back. No, I'm not going to carry whatever whatever another woman did to you. She used you for your money. Uh, you couldn't trust her if she was really there for the right reasons. No, I'm not going to carry that on my back. Because see, guess what happens? When a woman is in a marriage or even if she's in a lifetime partnership or a relationship with a man and she's carrying all of his stuff on her back and then she got her own so she carrying her stuff and his stuff and if she has children she's carrying their stuff and so she's walking around so boggled down and until she breaks because you can only carry so much weight you can only carry so much so then she has all this weight on her and then she breaks and then people are looking at her like what happened to her she abandoned life because she had too much weight to carry she's trying to be too many different people to one person you know kirk franklin had a video i shared it on my personal facebook page but he had a video about how the woman was carrying all the past relationships of her husband's and, and, and she just had so much weight on her and it, it wasn't fair to her that he brought all of that in so this is going out to the men it doesn't matter how much money you have it doesn't matter what kind of car you uh, own or what kind of home you you can purchase or how much money you have in your bank account if your heart is broken 
if your spiritual self is injured, none of that's going to matter because you're not going to know how to treat your spouse or your significant other or anyone for that matter. And then there, and then you know what the, the the phrase that I heard I hate the worst is nobody's perfect. So that gives you a pass to hurt me. That gives you a pass to hurt any other woman because you're not perfect. No, I know nobody's perfect. But if you hurt me and you hurt me over and over the same way, then you don't love me correctly. There is no love because love doesn't hurt. Love is not going to injure the person that you claim to love. So then you got love mixed up with something else and you need to deal with those love issues because those what they're their love issues. You can't love me right, broken, from a broken place. And I refuse to allow anyone, and I hope this goes for all women, refuse to allow a man to come into your life and give you mediocre. You know, they're just being mediocre. They're just barely making it through. And they continually to hurt you over and over in the same way. Then you have to question yourself, lady, do you, ladies, do you really love yourself? Because if you did, you would know that healthy boundaries would tell you that you wouldn't keep accepting somebody in that's poisoning your heart. Because I tell you what, if you stay with a man like that, before the end, your heart is going to be so black and cold and empty that by the time you do walk away or he walks away, you are not going to make anybody any good. You're not going to be able to be in a, a good, productive relationship. It's just not going to happen. And I, I, I'm sitting out in front of my office now. But this is going out to the fellas. I mean, ladies of substance, ladies of value and high standards, they're going to require more than just your money. Well, most of us anyway. We're going to want more than your money. We're going to want more than your accolades or whatever you feel like that should be enough for us. No, it's not. We want your heart. We want to connect to your heart. And guess what? We can't connect to your heart and get close to you if you got all of that old baggage left inside of you. We're like, oh, whoa, wait a minute. I see some stuff that ain't really, you know, I don't want to get my heart broken or I don't want to be hurt again because I don't deserve to be hurt. But this person is exampling a lot of toxic tendencies and behaviors and they justify it with, I'm not perfect. Well, guess what? That's not good enough for us anymore. Because if you are to lead us, if you are the foundational piece of our communities, we need you to be whole. We need you to be strong, dedicated, healthy men that can cover and protect the black woman or women in general that's what we need from our men we need that from you you want to lead her but you're showing her your all of this unstable emotions ev everywhere she makes one comment and you just go off on her that's not a healthy emotional trait that's a red flag. You need to deal with your emotions. Controlling, all of that pretension, after a while, I don't care how long you tried to fake that you were whole. I don't care how, how long you profess or you help other people. If you don't, teacher, teach, teacher needs to, to help themselves too. The doctor needs to heal themselves too. They can't just go out and heal everybody else and then your home is crumbling because they seeing some stuff that other people don't get to see and it's not adding up. We all have to deal with ourselves, all of us. So again, this is going out to the men and I'm gonna cut this short, but I wanted to address our men in our communities, successful, what, what we call successful black men, have all the money, the education, the accolades, the cars, the homes, all of these things, but they, they can't have a healthy whole relationship with a woman they're on their third their fourth or their fifth marriage those are all warning signs ladies they really are and even for men like women that are on their third fourth and fifth marriage that they're those are warning signs because we are the common denominator so i'm done
I love you. I'm not tearing you down. I'm only here to build you up. I believe that we can heal as a community. I believe that our men can be our protectors, our you know, uh, our protectors, our providers, and our priests. They can cover and protect our homes and our communities, but we have to get healthy first. We can't fake the funk. We can't pretend because anything that's inside of you, it comes out. It comes out and it's revealed. And anybody that has discernment, anybody that has a connection or a personal relationship with God, he's going to give you signs and warnings and he's going to let you see something about that person that they're trying to hide. And so it's going to come out. So I'm saying that to you, gentlemen, whatever you're hiding or you're pretending or you don't want to uh, uh, deal with it. It's going to deal with you and it's, it's, it's going to deal with you in a way that you're not going to like it, but you're not going to have any control over it because it's going to happen. Trust me, I know. I was one of those people that didn't deal with my demons. I went into a marriage with a man and I was married to him. I was with him for almost 12 years and I hadn't dealt with my demons of my past childhood traumas and it dealt with me and I broke. And I don't want that to happen to you. I don't want you to be in a marriage with somebody for that long or a relationship. And then the, your whole world comes crumbling down all because you didn't deal with those issues prior to getting married or prior to getting in a relationship. So you need to deal with them now. I want to tell you guys, I love you. My heart goes out to you. If you've been hurt by your parents, or by this life or this world in general or someone else you know my heart goes out to you but what I have to say to you is that you have to forgive those people you have to make a, a reconciliation you not really reconcile with the person that hurt you or the people that hurt you but you have to forgive them for you not for them but for you so that you can take charge and power over your own destiny because if you don't forgive the people that harmed you or hurt you they have power over you in more ways than you know and then you keep you know keep making the same bad decisions and same choices and you it looks like your life is doing this you know this downward spiral and you just keep repeating the same things getting the same results and that is known as insanity we have to stop that your your children need you your wives need you your mates need you your community needs you but we need you in a healthy manner now for all of those um because i'm not just speaking to the financially successful brother i'm speaking to the brother that's trying to make it that's trying to grow his business or or build his life up and i get when you say because i hear from women all the time when they say you know, I can't afford counseling. Yes, I need counseling. Yes, I have trauma and I can't afford to go pay this. You know what? We can afford to pay for the best of Louis Vuitton. We can go pay for the best of Gucci, um, Cartier. We can afford all the nice colognes and the perfumes and the hair and the makeup, you know, um, we can afford all of those nice luxury items. We can afford then we can afford to take care of our mental health we can i remember at one t at one point in my life my insurance didn't cover um counseling sessions or something like that and i had to pay out of pocket i found me a therapist that was uh trustworthy and had a lot of good reviews and i went to her and she charged me a hundred dollars per session it was a great sacrifice, but it's something I knew I had to do for myself. So I'm saying, I think that we can afford the things we want to afford. If you want to be whole and healthy and be in productive relationships with people. I mean, forget the platon. I mean, forget, you know, the intimate relationships. We need to be in healthy relationships with the people that are in, in the platonic relationships. Mothers fathers brothers sisters friends we don't want to hurt people so if we don't want to hurt people we need to get healthy and uh, it's been 30 minutes i need to get out of here because i got people driving up looking at me crazy because i'm in my car they think i'm talking to myself but 
gentlemen yes i just want i want to encourage you i want to let you know that we love you and we need you we need you whole we need you healthy so i pray that this reaches the right uh, person today and that you understand that you are valuable and that we love you and we need you but we need you to deal with some of those things inside that you've been putting off and just think about this no matter how high you think you are right now couldn't you be so much higher if you were in a healthy state of being just imagine that so i want you all to be encouraged i want to say that your your community needs you we love you we need you we need you to get healthy and whole and so i challenge you guys today if there's any of you out there that are going through situations within to make that first step to you know start building that personal relationship with god start letting him have those things because you know some of us we want a relationship with god but we don't want to give him away our deepest we don't want to give away the deep dark secrets we, you got to let him in you got to let him have access to the most dirtiest parts of yourself the most obscene parts of yourself the most vulnerable parts of yourself you have to give god access to that and say god take this from me help me free myself you have to be vulnerable to god so i want you to make make that first step but first of all connecting to your source because without god you and you're not going to be able to do it so connecting to your source asking him for help and then reaching out to a mental health professional that has good history and counseling and helping you along the way and helping you pull back the layers of why you keep making some of the decisions that you've made and why you know if it keeps coming back to the same complaint even if it's a different mate but it keeps coming back to the same complaint then maybe that's an issue you really need to deal with and so i challenge you you all today to really do some retrospective looking within yourselves and figure out you know what part of me is poisonous because we all have a part of ourselves that's poisonous and we need to deal with those poisonous pieces of us and stop listening to the religious people making excuses that we're not perfect for those that really truly believe in Christ that truly believe in God God sent Jesus here to reconcile us with him and so and he took away sin so we have power over sin if we have power over sin then we can be delivered from it we don't have to stay stuck in our old sinful the old sinful body we can rise up out of that body and come into a new body we don't have to say oh i'm not perfect i got no you have power over that if you keep going over there and doing that's because you want to do it don't blame it on nothing else, but it's your desire. It's what you want to do, and that's what you're going to do. I'm so I get so sick of hearing I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Oh, that's your that's your card to go and, and f up. That's your card to go be a whoremonger. That's your card to go and abuse cocaine. That's your card to go and over drink yourself to death to where you're you're corroding your liver. Are you smoking sick chain smoking cigarettes? back to back because you have this anxious feeling within you that's that feeling that you need to deal with but you smother it down with drugs and alcohol and sex with different women and you and there's there's something missing or there's a void and so you're trying to fill it with more money so i go out there and i'm hustling i'm making more money i'm doing this i'm doing that but that feeling is still there that uncomfortable feeling that space you can't even be alone with yourself because that feeling keeps coming up. So you, you gotta you gotta do something to get away from it. Oh, I know it all too well. That's why I can speak on it. You gotta deal with that space inside of you. Drugs can't feel it. Alcohol can't feel it. Different women can't feel that space. All the money you get can't feel that space. All the accolades, all these degreed up people that ain't got nobody in their life. Why is that? And, and I know sometimes we're waiting on our mates. Yes, I do. But there's sometimes there's some stuff in us we ain't dealt with. We can't connect to people. 
There's a reason why we can't connect to people. Let's deal with our issues. Because I'm telling you what, we're ruining a generation of children when they see us engage each other that way. When we can't be in connection or great communication with our, our children's father or our children's mother. Our children are watching us and, and they're going to mimic what we do. We're ruining a generation of children. We can't blame them for the way that they are. They got it from us. So how, how are they ever going to grow if we don't grow? If we just say, I'm not perfect, I do whatever I want to do. You got a wife at home, a beautiful wife at home, taking care of your kids. She's loyal and she's faithful. And you got two and three women on the side. Oh, I've seen it all. I've heard it all. I've worked at a hotel before, one of my side gigs. You, you guys gonna realize one day I'm just like a Jamaican. I got so many <laughs> streams of income. There's not much I haven't done. And so one time I was kind of low on income, trying to build my businesses or whatever else, and uh, trying to make ends meet because I got these children, these three children by a man that refused to um, support his children. So I'm being real here. Men abandon their children when the woman ain't around because you know why? Y'all want to hurt us. Y'all want to see us fail. But meanwhile, you're hurting and your, your children are failing right along with her. But I made that choice, so I hold myself accountable. Um, so one time I'm, I'm working in this hotel, and it's not just black men, it's white men, it's Spanish men, it's all type of men. They got wives at home, they going on business trips, and they going out and getting a $5 hooker. And oh, I'm not perfect. That's gonna be your card that you play. You're not perfect. You could possibly take your, your wife home AIDS or, or worse. No, you are the foundational tool. You're the piece that holds it all together because so if you don't have it together, it's not going to work. And then your, your family is suffering behind that. You are bringing all that. And, and you know what? Men that go out and mess with hookers or whatever, that's their thing. But you gotta remember, if you're messing with a woman that's only charging a minimum amount of money to have sex with you and do whatever you want her to do, how many demons is that poor woman does she have that she's giving to you because energy connects she's giving you all these lust demons all these spiritual demons and she's giving it to you because she's giving herself to you she's giving you all of that energy and you take all that junk home and you put it on your wife how dare you in the name of i'm not perfect Men, y'all got to clean yourselves up. You got to clean yourselves up. If we're going to if we're going to salvage the next generations, we have to clean ourselves up as adults. And I'm charging men today to clean yourself up. If you're a whoremonger, be that. Don't pretend with a woman at home that you can give a deadly disease to and she don't deserve it. If you're on the DL, then be that man don't lie to that wife or that woman at home if you like men you like men live in that walk in your truth but women we've had enough of carrying your shit because that's all it is it's not helping us it's making us worse and then we're walking around here batty as hell because we're so overwhelmed and you're saying oh what's wrong with the black woman why is she always angry? Why is she never smiles? Why is she always crying? Because she's tired. She's exhausted. She's carried bags since she's been little. She wants you to help her remove those bags so she can walk in God's design so that y'all can come together and really be what they call a power couple. You can't be a power couple if she's carrying all the weight. And a, a woman, she can't, she's not going to respect you if you can't lead. If you don't know how to lead, that's where the disrespect is coming from. I never called a man a bitch. Excuse my language. 
But I see so many women out there today calling men bitches. Why do you think that? Because you acting like one. You don't know how to control your emotions. You don't know how to control your penis. And you refuse to heal. And she calling you out your name because you acting like what she calling you. She needs you to man up. And I'm not saying that a woman should call a man that. Because I feel like if I ever get to the point where I got to call a man a B, then he not for, he's not for me. Because I need a man. I need a real man in my life. That I ain't got to question his manhood and call him out of his name. So, most women are like that. And I don't think I ever did a video this long. So, this got to be something that's really touching uh, my soul today. I see so many beautiful, well, I shouldn't say beautiful, but handsome, successful, quote unquote, successful black men out there. Eligible bachelors out there that's broken inside you're not helping your community and then you wonder why your community is failing why is your community failing why because we can't depend on our men and I'm not just talking about financial because many of y'all have money and all of that other stuff I'm talking about we can't depend on you to to protect us and cover us. Uh, just in, not that long ago in New York, this young woman was getting off of work. Many of us do, have done that. We, we getting off of work and she going into the liquor store to buy her a nice bottle of wine so she can release all that strain and that pressure that she probably got off of those people she worked for because they treat us like shit in corporate America. That's the truth. Wherever she worked, the black woman is always treated the worst. So we go through that shit so that we can keep a roof over our head and we can put food on the table for our children that many of us are supporting alone. That alone ain't right. If you're not taking care of your kids, you don't deserve nothing good to happen to you. Nothing. Because they are from your loins. They are your seeds and you can't even take care of your own seed. But this woman's going into the store, now worked a long day, getting her some wine, and three young black men in New York comes in after her one of them makes an advance at her and asked her could he pay for her wine she was not rude she wasn't upset she just said well thank you but no I think I have it and she proceeds to pay for her wine and go outside and she was attacked by all three black men black women do not feel covered or safe because our men are literally killing us and so she's screaming and she's begging for her life. Meanwhile, somebody's recording it. I'm wondering why that person didn't call the cops or try to help. Somebody's recording it and, and they could hear her say, I have to go pick my son up for daycare. So even in her trauma, I'm trying to bring this home. Even in our traumas, we think about our children. We will die for our children. We need our men to do the same things. Even in our traumas, when we're broken and we're hurting, we still cover and we protect our seeds. And we do what we got to do, even if we got to work two and three jobs. And I say this a lot because my ass had to work two and three jobs taking care of those three children by myself. And I am not embarrassed or ashamed because I made that choice because I was broken when I got with the man and I knew damn well he wasn't the man to be, to stand up and be a man and help me raise these children. So I blame me. I hold myself accountable for that. I went and did my work and healed myself so I wouldn't do that again. Well, men, guess what? You have to do it too. Even in your trauma. You still need to be protecting and covering your community, even in your trauma. But you don't need to stay in that. You need to go get help. But that doesn't give you a pass because we don't have a pass. We didn't get a pass because we were broken. I can't work. I can't provide. I can't shelter my responsibilities. We don't get passes. Neither should you. So this is a challenge to black men, to all black men out there. That woman that you don't know 
that don't have a dime in her pocket and she on that street corner that's that's your responsibility just like as every other black man out there if she's black and she's homeless and her children are out there and she's on the corner with a cup in her hand somebody failed that woman so this is a challenge for God, for you men to step up get the help that you need get healthy and whole so that you can at least cover and protect your your home you know, if that's all you want to do, that's fine. Because I see some people, they out there, they doing their thing, and they but they covering and they protecting their home. Well, guess what? Even with them covering and protecting their home, and they're making healthy whole children, those children are go are going to go out and do the same thing. So they actually help better in our community. But you at least need to start there. And then once you start there, if you feel compelled to go out and help other families, then do so. We're supposed to be a community. It takes a village to raise one child. Think about how many children that are not covered. Think about that. And then they're still expected to perform like other children that were. It's not possible. They're damaged and hurt too. I went 45 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna get off of here. Um, but again, this is something that I'm passionate about because I see men in my community faking it and shaking it and they still got issues that they still need to deal with. And until we deal with those internal issues, we're never gonna be where we need to be as a race, as a community, as a culture. And it's time for us to build because our community is failing. When I see a child hurting, it's not just, oh, that's their child. No, that's my child too. That's my responsibility to make sure that child is safe if I can see it. If I see some child hurting and I turn away, I'm a part of the problem. So this is a challenge to our black men. We love you. We need you in our communities, in our home. We need you to man up. We need you to stand up. And even in your trauma, we need you to cover and protect us. Protect us. Period. Now, I hope this reaches you guys. And, and I hope it reaches you in a positive way. I hope it hits home. And I, I, I pray that it's something about that'll change your your method or your way of doing things just it could be a small thing change one thing about yourself and then the next day change something else and then change you make that one step god is going to help you make the rest that's all you need to do and challenge yourself to put that bottle of gin down that you may buy every week and hold on to that money until you have enough money to go to counseling or or if you're going out and you're drinking at bars or whatever or you know it's some it's some money that we just throw away um put that money aside and save it for your mental health so you can work through those issues because guess what even if you don't hook up to another human being ever you still deserve yourself a chance to be healthy and whole and not be so anxious and not be so riddled with hurt and pain you deserve that too so i challenge you guys to do it I want to say bye bye i love you and i pray that you guys receive this in a positive manner because we're calling out and we need you bye bye have a good day